Hi you guys, happy Friday. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kong. So for this video, I want to talk to you guys about um, deals, Friday deals, all right? So I, so you guys let me know what you think about this, but I want to start to do this for you guys every Friday, all right? Every Friday, I want to share with you guys a story um, on one of the deal that we closed, either um, a current deal or a deal in the past that we already closed, sharing you guys the story, the breakdown of how we got the deals, um, uh, how we lock it up, and then how um, from all the way to uh, finding the deals, locking it up, uh, selling the deal, closing on it, and getting paid, okay? I wanted to share with you guys um, kind of the full story, the breakdown. So if you guys want to comment below, let me know what you think. Is that something that you guys are interested in? Is that something good? Is that a good idea or not? But I want to be able to do that for you guys every Friday. I remember when I first started, that is actually something that I would like to uh, to listen to or to hear just to kind of get an idea and uh, to also to is be inspired of how they found the deals um, to from you know closing on it and getting paid etc. All right, you guys. So I would like to start to do that every Friday. So comment below. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Is that something good? Is that some way you guys want to? Um, is that something you guys want to uh, listen to or not? All right. But today's Friday, I want to talk about to start off. All right, to start off, I wanted to start um, with a of um, my first wholesale deal uh, that I did. I know that I share this in another one of my video, um, but I didn't share. But I didn't share with you guys the breakdown of how I got the deal. All right, so deal um, uh, today Friday deal is my first wholesale deal and the breakdown of it. All right, you guys. So. Um, how I got this deal here, so how I got this deal here is at this time here, I was kind of stressing out and overwhelmed with all the fix and flip and all the money kind of tied up, all right? Kind of tied up already. I just can't do any more fix and flip. So um, we got this deal here. The intention is to lock this deal up and to wholesale it, all right? So <clears throat> at this time, I was going, um, at this time, I was actually going to a masterminding group. So there was a local masterminding group in the area, and there wasn't many of them. Um, there was about four or five of them. Um, there were about, I would say, six, six or seven, I'm sorry, six or seven of us in that masterminding group. And um, I went there, and uh, so this deal here, it was currently, it was, at, it, was, um, it was on the market, and then it became expired. It was on the market for about like 30 days, and then it became expired. It's in a really hot area, really hot area, really good neighborhood, really hot area. It's in a college area, uh, the college rental area, and um, and uh, they at, at the time they had it listed for three hundred thousand. All right, they had it listed for three hundred thousand, and um, within thirty days it becomes expire. And uh, I guess some of the people in my masterminding group was really uh, some of them really like the uh, really like the property, and they were talking about it. They're saying, you know what? Um, who, you know, whoever can get this deal for like 260 or 280 or something like that, um, it'll be a really good deal. They had it listed for 300. Now, the thing is that um, this deal became expire, and at the time, um, so I was asking them, so was there any offer came in? There were offer came in at like 300, even over 300, right? At 300 or over 300, but the seller. Um, so well, what it is is um, the mom and the son. It's a partnership on this deal, and the mom wanted to sell. The mom has the majority of it, right? She has the, I think she has like eighty percent, and the son only like twenty percent. So she has the, um, she has the right to say, hey, I want to sell or not. But anyway, at the time, I'm sorry, you guys got an incoming call. But anyway, let's get back to it. So at the time, uh, at the time, the mom wanted to sell. The son wasn't really wanting to sell. And I guess the mom was kind of on the fence about it um, too. So they got offer came in, but they didn't accept it. They felt like they could get more and they wanted to wait. All right. They wanted to wait and they felt like they can get more. So offer came in, but they didn't accept it. So it became expire. All right. It became expire. So I heard a lot of vibe about this property, etc. So I went on, and at this time I already got I, I I have access to the MLS. All right, I'm not an agent, but I have access to the MLS. So I went on there, I pulled it up, um, saw the property address, saw the um, property address with the seller phone number and the um, and their uh, actual mailing address. So what I did was I, I, I handwritten the envelope. Right, and I went to the computer. I just type up, "Hi, my name is Kong. Um, you know, I'm interested in buying your house lo or your property located." Blah blah blah. Please give me a call. I can pay cash and close quickly. So, anyways, I sent them a letter, and then within a couple of days, I d I didn't hear back. I decided to give them a call. So I gave them a call, 
and then I left him a voicemail. All right, I didn't I didn't get a hold of him. I got I left him a voicemail, and then the mom called me back. Then she called me back and she's like, "Yeah, we just got one of your letter and we got one of your voicemail that you're interested in buying." The, and this is, I think, um, this is after this is after a couple weeks or at least a couple weeks after it was expired. And uh, she called back and she said, "Yeah, we got your letter. We got your voicemail. Uh, what are you, you know, what are you looking to offer for us?" At the time, you guys, I didn't have a script. I didn't have a, a, a script. I didn't know what to say. Uh, but I. Basically, I have done deals before prior to this, um, so I have somewhat of a um, somewhat of a knowledge kind of how to talk to them, but I wasn't really good, right? I wasn't really good. So anyways, yeah, I told her I was interested in, would love to make her an offer on the property she's interested in selling at this time, and she's like, um, well, not I'm, I'm not really interested in selling, um, but if the price is right, right? So we talked back and forth, and then um, I kind of um, and uh, I kind of mentioned a number. I said, "Well, you know, maybe you know, I'm I'm interested in buying it at like two. I, I told her like two twelve. I can pay all cash, close quickly at two twelve. She said she 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 kind of giggled. She said, "Kong, no way. We had it listed for like three hundred. We got an offer came in. I didn't even accept it. Um, so no, thank you." And then uh, I said, "Okay, not a problem. If you if anything changes, please give me a call back, etc." Um, so anyways, I, I didn't hear from her for about, um, I didn't hear for, I didn't hear from her for about another, um, I think 30 days or so, right? About a month or so. And then, um, she called back and then she's like, yeah, you know what? Uh, we got some stuff coming up. So, um, you know, I'm more interested in really selling it right now and would love to chat with you about the price and see where you can really pay the most for the property. Then I ask her, so, you know, what would you consider selling to us for? You know, I've already mentioned a price. I already gave you a number. So what would you consider selling to us for? And uh, she, so this is, you guys, right now, this is all over the phone, right? It's, it's all over, it's, it's all just been talking back and forth over the phone. She's like, well, you know what? I think I got to be, um, she said, well, the lowest I'll go is like 260. All right. She said, the lowest I'll go is 260. Um, take it or leave it. And, uh... I said, well, you know, 260 is probably not going to work for us. Um, you know, would you consider like 221? She said, no, no, 221 is just way too low. Um, thank you for your offer, but no, thank you. Then, um, then, anyways, then um, within two days later, I was in Home Depot. I was walking around Home Depot trying to pick out some materials for my rehab. <laughs> then she calls me up and she's like, well, you know what, Kong? Um, last time your offer, your your last offer was two twenty one. Is that correct? And I said, yeah, that's that's correct. That's she said that's that the most you can do. I said, yeah, that's the absolute most that we can do. Um, she said, well, um, where can we meet? And you guys won't believe this. We did our deal at McDonald's. <laughs> we did a deal at McDonald's. All right. Um, at the time, we did our deal at McDonald's. I said. Uh, I said, sure, yeah, we uh, we can meet up. Um, where would you like to meet up? And she was, you know, she was old and she wasn't very good at directions and things like that. And I said, well, you know, what's the closest? What is the closest McDonald's uh, to you or a Starbucks, right? Or a Starbucks? And she said, Starbucks is just too loud, uh, too loud. I said, and then she's like, okay, well, the closest McDonald's to me is, you know, it's only about five minutes away. I said, okay. I said, sure, great. I'll meet you there. All right. Uh, I said uh, I said I'll bring my purchase and sell agreement, um, so we can go over it and then we can sign there. Is that okay with you? She said, Yeah, just bring it. So, anyways, long story short, you guys, I just bring the contract. We sat there, we chat about it, and uh, we signed the contract for two hundred twenty-one thousand. All right. We got the contract signed. I was so so excited, you guys. I was so excited, and uh, also too, is I wanted to let you guys know at this time. I had very limited buyers. I think I had only about 10 or 12 buyers. And I just knew that I got it for a good price. I just didn't, I, I, I'm not absolutely sure that I can sell it because at this time, um, my mindset was, you know, to get a good deal, you gotta lock it up and you gotta close it quickly. So my time frame was only about 15 days. I got 15 days to close on this property. All right, I got 15 days to close on this property. And I only had like 10 or 12 buyers at, at the time. And I'm not even sure, right? But I just knew I got a good deal um, uh, on this property. And if I hustle, 
I, and I was like, if I hustle, I'll, I'll probably be able to sell it. So, so anyways, um, anyways, right when I got it under contract, I was super pumped, super excited. As I was driving home, um, I called the wife and I told her, oh my gosh, come on, I got this property under contract. Oh my gosh, we're gonna make, um, we're gonna make some money on this. <laughs> and, and anyways, um, I start sending out to my buyers. I sent it out to them for two. I sent it out to them for two fifty four. It's an absolutely really good deal at two fifty four. And the property is, I've, you guys, I've never seen the property, but based on of what other, uh, based on of what other, uh, uh, um, the, from what other people say, from because they've some of them since this property is is listed, some of the people that I've talked to have already viewed the property, and they say, Kong, it's going to take about probably eighty thousand or so, eighty to hundred thousand dollars to fix this property up, right? So I sent it out for two fifty four. So if the buyer put a hundred into it, let's just say if he puts a hundred into it, he'll be at uh, three fifty. But this property, this property fix up is probably worth around that four seventy five, um, four seventy five or so. All right. So they have there's a hundred thousand uh, dollar margin for them. So uh, in equity. So anyways, um, I set it out for two fifty four. Within like within like seven day, within like five or seven days in. I got buyers to say, yeah, Kong, it's a good price, but I don't know, it's a little iffy, the rehab, etc. So some buyers call me back and say they're interested, but they were concerned about how much it's going to cost to fix it up, and they're like, oh gosh, Kong, the, the property just needs so much work, and so a lot of them was so a lot of them ex kind of excited, but also got cold feet, and they were, you know, a little scared. So I said, oh my gosh, I sent out to all my buyers already. At this time, you guys, I didn't know. I didn't know about, you know, calling all the agents. So I didn't know what I know now, right? I didn't know I didn't know what I know now. But anyways, I sent out to all my buyers. Pretty much got a no, right? Pretty much got a no. And then um, I said, man, I, I, I got to sell this deal. So anyways, I start to... Um, I started to just to pick up the phone and just start calling people. I just start picking up the phone and just start dialing agents. Just start, start dialing agents, calling all my, um, you know, calling everybody that I uh, that I know in the in real estates in my local market. And anyway, one one of them said, "Hey, why don't you call this guy, right?" And the, and his name is Anthony. So I gave him a call. Um, he's a local fixer, flipper slash wholesaler um, in my local market. And I, I sent it out to him. He said, Kong, I got a buyer for this. I, I got a buyer that's going to want this property. I said, oh my gosh. Awesome. <laughs> I said, awesome. He said, I'm going to send it out to him. And uh, he said, I'm going to send it out to him. And uh, I'll let you know. All right. So anyways, he sent it out to the guy. Within an hour, uh, he calls me back. He said, Kong, my buyer wants it. All right. He has seen the property and he wants it. All right. He has walked through the property and he wants this property. So at this time, you guys, I act really cool on the phone, just like I share with you guys in my other video. I, I try to act really cool on the phone, but I was so excited, right? Um, but I act really cool. I said, hey, you know what? I got some other buyers that's very interested in this property. Um, so I said, how, how soon can your buyer close? He said, he said, Kong, dude, the guy can close like within like five days. And, um, and he said, hey, um, I also tap on top. I also put five thousand on top of your fee, so you didn't have to pay me my fee. I put five thousand on top. So he sent it out to the buyer for two fifty nine. All right, I had so I sent it out for two fifty four. He puts five thousand dollar on top, so the buyer is gonna buy it at two fifty nine. So anyway, I asked him. I said, "Well, uh, cool. When is your buyer ready?" He said, "Kong, the buyer's ready to sign uh, the assignment agreement. He's ready to sign the contract." And get this deal done. He can close it in five days. Anyways, went and met. I said, great. Um, um, went and met with the... He, he, so, he set an appointment. I went there. Met up with the buyer. Got him the contract. He signed it. He was trying to negotiate with me on the whole selfie. And I said, dude, if you don't want it, I got some other buyers that's going to jump on it right now. You know, because my... Because the reason why I come and meet up with you, because one of your, um, you know, someone sent me and said, hey, you got this, you're ready to go. Otherwise, I wouldn't cancel the appointment with my other buyer. He said, okay, 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 I'll sign it. <laughs> but I absolutely have no buyer. So he signs it, and I send it into uh, the title company. 
Oh, all right, you guys. I don't want to leave something out here. So basically, when I when basically when I went and met that buyers and I, and he signed the contract and he signed the assignment contract and we both signed, um, then I sent it into the title company. Um, he dropped off his deposit, his um, earnest money, his deposit already. Um, after that, like a day or two later, he wanted to, or yeah, like a day or two later, he wanted to go into the property. All right, he wants to go into the property. He he told me that hey, um, you know what, I'm ready to go. You know, I drop off the five thousand. Um, you're gonna be sh sure that I'm gonna close on this property, but he wants to walk into the property just to see for one last time before it closes. And I said no. I said no. I've learned my lesson before, you guys. You don't want the buyers to go back into the property. You don't want any issue to come up. He said, Kong, I've I already seen the property. I, you know, he said he already seen it. He's ready to go. But now he just want to go back in just to kind of do that final uh, walkthrough before it closes. I said, no, you guys, absolutely no. Do not let your buyer go back into the property. Once it's done, you don't want him to go back and find something issue or something comes up that's going to cause this deal to break down or to fall apart. All right. Doesn't matter what they say. You said, hey, the deal was already done. That's what we we agreed upon. He he doesn't go back into it. All right, you guys. And also, too, is what I learned from this deal is you guys got to buy build up your buyer's list. All right. Every buyers look at things differently. Um, other buyers that I sent out, you guys, I have limited buyers. And for them, too, is they're looking more on the flip side and they were more concerned of, you know, that it's going to cost them more to rehab the property and that their profit margin is not big enough for them to risk putting, you know, buying at that price and put another hundred or so plus into the property. This buyer is willing to buy this property is because he's going to keep it for long term and he loves college rental and that's what makes this deal works for him because he understand that he's not going to put that much money in he was just going to put a little bit just to just to keep it decent and keep it as a rental property all right you guys so anyways i just don't want to miss that i so i i, I don't want to miss that so i want to add this that into the video okay you guys i send the deal into the title company i told um i told the buyer to drop off a five thousand non-refundable so he went and did that drop off a of 5000 non refundable and uh, now when i said when uh, okay when it time when it when it was time to close so i so i closed about 5 days earlier than the 15 days that was on the uh on the uh, agreement with the seller so uh, basically we found the buyer within 10 um, 10 days or so okay um so anyways the time of closing you guys it was crazy i thought the di the deal fell apart at the time of closing i got a call from the title company and uh they left and then uh they, and then um they left me a voicemail saying that the seller wouldn't sign the final paperwork to sell the property and oh my gosh you guys when i listened to that voicemail i thought that the seller must have found out how much i made on the assignment fee um, they must have found out that I, I assigned the contract and I wasn't the buyer and they and they got all upset because they find out how much money I made on this and oh my gosh just a whole bunch of things went through my head and I said oh my gosh my first wholesale deal and it's fall apart and I got excited uh, for nothing anyway so I called back to the title company and I said man let's get this thing fixed all right so I called back and asked them what's going on I said so what's wrong so why didn't they sell or I'm yeah so why didn't they sign and she said, well, Kong, it's because um, you mentioned that you pay for, you know, you pay for all the closing costs. And they also have, they thought that you were going to pay for the back back taxes due, right? Their, their, their back taxes, which is their property tax. And that was roughly about um, $5,000. And I said, oh, no, no. We agreed on I pay for all the closing costs, but not the back taxes. And I called the seller. I said, okay, um... I said, okay, just just give me a second. Let me call up the seller and let me get this straight so we can get this closed, okay? Oh my gosh. So, anyways, I called the seller and I said, I said, hey, um, you know, we agreed upon that we pay for all your closing costs, but not your back taxes, etc. And you guys, the seller's sons. Okay, so the issue right now is the mom. She's all good with it, right? She's all good with it. She wants to sign it, but the son is the one that stops that stops her from signing the final paperwork. And the reason why is he wants to renegotiate. He wants to negotiate. He he wanted us to take care of that that fee, and he understand that our closing costs wasn't going to pay for that fee. But he wants that he wants us to pay for it because he's the one that didn't really want to sell the property. All right, so he's starting to stop his mom. 
So he calls me up. He said, "Well, Kong, you know, we're, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell my mom to sign that paperwork um, unless you pay for, unless you pay that five thousand dollar." I said, "You know what?" So at this time, the total amount fee, you guys, would have been net to us, would have been thirty three thousand dollar, not twenty eight. But I went and said, "Fine." I said, "Okay, fine." You know what? We're gonna take care of it. Um, if you guys go sign the paperwork now to get this all wrapped up, we'll pay for it. All right, we'll take care of it. I figure, you know what? We're already making great money. This is my first wholesale deal, and I just want to get it done, right? So I call up the buyer and I say, "Hey, you know what? There's some back taxes. I know that this wasn't in our agreement, so don't worry about it. I'll get it taken care of. But when you bring the money, you know, um, so just pay me less." So at so I said, hey, just minus five thousand dollars from my assignment fee. So at this time, you guys, I didn't when I was working with this title company, I didn't know how to line up um, the agreement where I get paid where at closing, which means um, the buyer will bring in the whole funds, the money will go to the seller, whatever needs to be taken care of, and then the and then the Chicago title will write me a check. But I didn't know how to set that up at this time, so. I have to depend on the buyers to write me a check outside of escrow. And also too is this title company wouldn't do what I wanted to do, all right? So anyways, I so that's why the buyer was, you know, the, so the so the buyer was like, "Okay, fine." So the buyer was okay with it. So he paid me outside of escrow, not not at the not um so the title company wasn't the one that write me a check. It was the buyers that write me a check outside of escrow because I didn't know how to set it up at the time. So basically, I kind of trust the buyer to uh, to pay me after the closing. Um, but I talked to the guy, and and he got reputation in the area. He bought a lot of properties from other wholesale as well. So I haven't done a deal with the guy, but I trusted him because I trust the other guy. Um, you know, because he he got some really good work to uh, to say about this buyer. So, anyways, he paid me outside of closing. So we finally closed on it, but it almost blew up. So I finally closed on it. So net to us was twenty eight thousand. That was my first wholesale deal, you guys. And anyways, you guys, I'm sorry about for the long story, but my first wholesale deal was executed and done at McDonald's. All right. So anyways, there you guys go. I hope you guys learn a lot from it. I hope you guys enjoy the story. Uh, but that was my first wholesale deal. That's what changed everything uh, for me at the time because I felt like, hey, oh my gosh, it took me so long to flip a property. And make you know thirty, forty thousand. Um, now I can do it within seven to ten days, and that's what changed the game for me. And to me, to be honest, it wasn't about the amount of money, right? It's good that it was that amount of money, but even if it's a couple thousand or five thousand or ten thousand dollar, you guys, I think it would have changed the game for me because of how much, how much easier and less stress that was involved in the deal than when I was fix and flip. All right. So, anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed that story. But I want to do a story, a de um, a Friday deal story every single Friday uh, for you guys sharing. You know, either you know some of the past deal that we did or some of the current deal that we already did and close upon. So you guys will know the breakdown of it. So drop me a comment. Let me know if that's something that you guys are interested in. You guys, this channel is for you guys. It's really not for me, but it's for you guys. It's to tell me what you need, uh, what you you know, um, what what kind of content, what kind of video you want me to do. And uh, I'll definitely try my best to deliver. But that's what I would like to do every Friday. If you guys like it, drop me a comment and let me know. All right, you guys. But I got some really exciting and crazy stories. Some deals takes a couple days, four to five days to close. Some takes a couple weeks to close. And some deals are just crazy where I have incident where it almost blew up and it didn't close. So I would love to share it with you guys. So drop me a comment and let me know. For those of you who haven't subscribed to my channel and is interested in learning about wholesaling houses where you don't put up any of your own cash, you don't need good credit, you don't need any construction background, smash that subscribe button, let me share and teach you guys how to do it and you can do it actually virtually and that's pretty much what we're doing now where we don't meet the seller, the buyer and we don't need to see the property. We're able to lock everything up over the phone, execute it, close and get paid. All right, you guys? and. Uh, for all of my subscribers, as always, you guys are super supportive. So I want to say thank you so much. It's because of you guys that uh, makes me to pushes me to keep on uh, producing video like this and uh, keep this channel going. All right, you guys. So keep it coming and don't be shy. Hit that thumbs up if you guys like this video. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. But hey, anyways, and as you guys can see in the back here, oh yeah, I got to show you the deal checks. Hold on a second. Here. All right, you guys. So you guys probably haven't seen it. 
in one of my other video, but there it is, 28,000 and some change. I, I honestly don't remember where this come from, this this little 460, uh, 4, 463, I think this must have came from my earnest money or something like that. So anyways, here it is, that's my first deal, boom, and I got many other one here that I was sitting in the back, it's just, these are just some of the deals uh, that uh, that I did. Um, but we have more deals. Uh, the wife just wouldn't let me post. Anyway. Yeah, the wife, she just wouldn't let me post um, any more deals up there. But anyways, you guys, um, all those deals have stories behind them. So I would love to share them with you. Um, so subscribe to my channel. And also, too, is hit that bell notification. I just found this out that when you hit that bell, every single video that I upload, um, you guys will get notified right away so you guys don't miss any episode. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful Friday and have a great weekend. Bye.